Hello Algebra 2 students. We're going to start um, section 6 in chapter 2, Special Functions. And we are just going to focus on piecewise defined functions. And there's, I have to teach a little bit more in class as well. So special functions, a piecewise defined function. It's a function that is written using two or more expressions. And I'm going to show you an example of that here in a minute. So this is what a piecewise function looks like. We have two functions and we have two, um, uh, two situations. So when x is less than a negative 1, you'll graph this. When x is greater than or equal to a negative 1, we'll graph x plus 3. So for example, we need to see um, what the value is at negative 1. So I'm going to go ahead and start there. So f of x. Um, equals x minus 2. When I plug in a negative 1, I'm going to get negative 1 minus 2. So we get a negative 3. So at negative 1, negative 3, 1, 2, 3. Now notice this for this one, x minus 2, x is less than a negative 1, so I'm going to put an open circle here. Okay, and so when we graph this, we have a slope of 1. And so we can go down one to the right one, down one to the right one, down one to the right one. And then, and so then we can draw this line here, going this way. And I can get rid of that one, maybe. Yeah, that one we can get rid of, we don't need that one. And so now, um, let's also look at when f of x is x plus 3. We're going to plug in a negative 1 there because, again, that's the spot where the 2 are in pieces. So we're going to get a positive 2. So for this one, then, we're going to go up to 2. And this one's going to be a solid dot because it's greater than or equal to. And again, our slope is up one to the right one, so I'm going to make dots here. And then um, we can make our line. I'll make it red. Right up here. So that is our piecewise function. Um, so see, we see a gap here. Uh, we see a gap. So if we were to list the domain and range, the domain, if you look here, look at your x's, what's happening, we can state all real numbers because um, we do have, we're starting at negative 1 and going less than that and we're also going greater than or equal to negative 1. So our range then we stay f of x, um, if we notice we have this gap here. So with our gap, it's in between these two numbers. And I'll put this over here. Um, so f of x has to be it has to be less than a negative three or um, f of x could be greater than or equal to 2. So it's greater than or equal to 2 because it's above this, it's above um, positive 2, but it's also less than a negative 3. So that's how we write our domain and range. So now, given the graph, can we write our piecewise function? Well, we know we're going to start with f of x and we're going to have a bracket here. So for this line right here, notice that we just have a straight line, a constant line of 6. So when f of x equals 6, it's going to be for if x is less than or equal to a negative 4. And then we have this piece right here. This is in between if x is in between a negative 4 
it's a negative four, maybe it's a negative five here. And in between negative two. So we have to find out what the slope of this line is. So the slope of the line, I looked here, this is going to be, remember slope is change in y over change in x, so this is nine right here. We could say this is negative five comma nine, and this point right here is negative two comma six. So from there, oh, and I gotta change that. I just noticed that. You guys probably were saying that. That's a five as well. Because, yeah, we can't have any gaps there. So then, um, when we find the slope, we have a slope of a negative one. So it's a negative x. And then if we were to keep going, finding our, um, our intercept here, because we're going down one to the right one, it'd be plus four. If we were to continue that line. And so then we have our next boundary is if x is greater than or equal to a negative two. And then so from here I can just look at the graph and notice we're going up one to the right two to get here. Up one to the right two. So my slope is going to be one half x and it crosses the y-axis at a positive one. So this is how you would write out the equation when you're given the graph. Looking at those line segments, trying to find your slopes and your y-intercepts. Now straight lines, constant functions like this are pretty easy because you just can say the number that it's on. Alright, so there is a piecewise function and we've seen it before and it's the absolute value function. This is, if we were to graph the absolute value function, um, we could graph it in pieces. So when x is greater than 0, we just graph f of x equals x. At 0, it equals 0. And then it's a negative x if x is less than 0. So you'll always have this v shape with the absolute value function. And we have this corner here. And the domain's all real numbers. And here, the range would be all non-negative real numbers. So f of x would be greater than 0. And here's the intercepts. And not define, meaning we can't define it when x is or when f of x is less than zero, because we'll never have negatives. Now, if we were to actually graph um, an absolute value function, we know this is going to take on the v shape. f of x equals 2x in absolute value minus 4. Um, here we know it's going to take on the v shape, but we know it's going to be shifted some because we're timesing by 2 here and we're subtracting 4. So what I want you to do right now is pause the video and go ahead and make a table. You can start at negative 2 and then go to positive 2 and uh, plug those values in and see what you get. Go ahead and pause the video. So you notice we get a little pattern here. So at negative 2 we'll get 0. Negative 1 will get negative 2. 0, we're at negative 4. And then it's the same on the other side here because we get that V. We can go ahead and make our um, lines or piecewise function, piecewise graph. And so what I want you to do for next class then is actually find the domain and range. I want you to list out the domain and range because sometimes we have some trouble with that. So go ahead and see if you can do that for the next video. And that's all I have for you. Come with lots of questions. We'll see you later.